We now move on to one of the oldest checkmate patterns that was ever published, the Damiano checkmate. And apparently this first was published in 1512. So maybe some people at chess.com can still remember this puzzle. But it was actually failed to be shown on any databases because in the original publication, uh, Damiano, who came up with his checkmate, did not place the white king on the board, which is a, a schoolboy error. Now, what is this checkmate? Well, have a look at the following position here. Can you see a way for white to force checkmate? Well, he can do this by first giving up his rook, rook to h8 check. And the key things to remember about this checkmate is if you have an open Harry file, h file, if you have a pawn or bishop on g6 and your opponent's king is on g8, this pattern can often occur. And what you're really trying to do is just get your queen from d1 or wherever it is on the board to h7. This is the key, key idea of the Damiano checkmate, to get your queen right into h7. So it's the neighbor of the kiss of death. And the reason it's called Damiano checkmate is because you do often give up your rook first. Now, here, white can also win by playing queen to h5. But my first thought in any tactical sequence is you should always look at the checks first. And this is a good lesson here. I mean, there's only two checks. Queen d5 check would lose your queen. The only other check is rook to h8 check. And black has one move. And now that the rook has got out the way, the queen has access into the position. It can either go to h5 or to h1. For example, queen h1 check. And it's going to be checkmate very shortly on h7. So that is the basic Damiano puzzle. But there are a number of cases when this has occurred in games. So I'm now going to show you an actual loss which I had when my opponent did the Damiano on me. And again, in order for him to play this brilliant tactic we're going to see, he must have been aware of this pattern. And that's one of the aims of this series. Once you're aware of the patterns, you'll spot the tactics more easily. So let's move on to this example now. So like I mentioned, this is a game I played. I had the black pieces here. And I was now playing, uh, well, should I say now, I was playing who is now um, a very famous publisher of books, Jacob Agard, um, originally from Denmark, a grandmaster. He had white. Uh, Agard had just taken on E4. I took back with my F pawn. And you may be thinking here, how, how on earth is this related to the Damiano technique? Well, what was the Damiano technique? Remember what I said, it's basically an open H file and a pawn or a bishop on g6. And by looking at this position and looking at the most forcing moves and being able to realize the pattern that I've just shown you, you may be able to see a very dangerous sequence that White now played. And I have to say, it took me by a nasty, a nasty surprise. Knight to g6 check, a fantastic move. Now, I really have to take that knight, otherwise I'm going to lose my bishop. And the point of this is, after pawn takes g6, white is now setting up the typical Damiano technique. A pawn on g6, a rook on h1, and all he needs to try to do now, can you remember his next idea, is to get the queen into h7. I only have one move, king to g8. What should white do now? And this is quite an advanced example because it's not entirely straightforward. But if you remember the technique about getting the queen around, it should become clear. Queen to c1. Probably the same occurs with the queen going to d1 or to b1. The queen needs to have access to h1. Now, if white had tried something like rook to h5, with the idea of going rook to h1, this would have given me time to defend. And you always have to consider your opponent's best defense. And after rook to f6, I have time to take on g6 and run with my king to f7. Now, after queen to c1, this very excellent move, I can no longer play rook to f6 because of the Damiano attack. And can you remember how this attack occurs? White can force checkmate here in typical fashion. Rook to h8 check. The king has to take that. And now this queen comes in to that h7 square. Queen h1 check. Queen h7 check. And in this position, the black king is still blocked in. So queen to h8 delivers this checkmate. After queen to c1, I'm in a pretty helpless situation. I tried queen to d8 with the idea of blocking the h-file with bishop to h4. My opponent played an interesting move here. 
with bishop to c7, but he actually had a much stronger move than this. And it was a much more thematic move. Maybe you can improve on my grandmaster opponent's play here. What can white do now in order to force my resignation? There's nothing much I can do after a very forcing sequence. Again, pause if you need to. Well, bishop to c7 was okay, but there's no reason to stop the Damiano technique here. Rook to h8 actually works anyway. The point being, king takes, queen to h1 check. Now my king cannot move because the queen flies into h7. I have to play bishop to h4. And it looks like black might be okay here because the queen is defending the bishop. But after the move g5, well, it's clear to see that black is losing. There's not really any sufficient way to stop the white queen coming into h4, into h7, delivering mate. And desperate tries like queen takes g5 will leave black with a serious material deficiency. So this would have been the simplest way to win. And again, this whole technique is about getting the queen into your opponent's position. Now, one more example coming up of this pattern, a slightly different version of it from a very recent match. So let's move over there now. The last example I want to use in the Damiano pattern, just to demonstrate these patterns are not fantasy. They don't just happen on very rare occasions. They actually will happen quite regularly. And if you know all of these patterns, they're probably going to occur in most of your games at some point. That's the key thing. The better you know them, the better prepared you'll be. And this game, the time of me filming, is actually taken from yesterday. On the white side, we have Aronium. On the side of the black pieces, Neponanachi. And it's taken from the Chess.com Speed Challenge, which I was uh, very enjoying watching, a great competition on Chess.com. And here, a slightly different technique, but I think it's the same idea. In this position, Aronian, now with the white pieces in a very complex position, played knight to e7 check. And amazing that these guys can see such tactics so quickly. It really mind combogulates me. I love that word. I had to get it in. Combogulation. Love combogulation. And the point of this tactic is to release the bishop. And after knight takes e7, Aronian now played bishop takes e6 check. Now, actually, black resigned here. If he plays rook to f7, white is going to win too much material. He'll be a rook up. He'll win the game. And the whole point of black's resignation is that if he goes king to h8, can you see this slightly different version of of the checkmate we're researching here. Remember, it's about the queen coming into h7 normally, but this has the same technique, the same pattern. And what I'm showing you here is that when you know the basic checkmates, you'll be able to slightly change them. Hopefully, you'll be able to notice these aspects, the key aspects of them, and hopefully you'll be able to use them in your own games. Well, that's the idea anyway. It doesn't always work for me, but hey-ho, it worked for Aronian here. The point of this is, we need to open up the H file. We need to get our queen to H1. So rook takes H7 check. And after king takes H7, we can now move our queen to H7 check. There's only one defense. Bishop to H6. And after bishop to H6, well, the queen flies in to H6 with checkmate. So again, a similar theme, I think, to the earlier two videos, or should I say the earlier topics of this one video. And again, I really like this checkmate. It's getting very pretty and uh, we've still got 10 more to go. So I hope you stay tuned for the rest of these pattern checkmates. And uh, I enjoyed this one a lot. So let's move on. Well, hopefully you'll move on with me to another video soon. Bye for now.